in the rotation already? I did not. Okay. Everybody, um, we'll go ahead and get started with Coach Maneri first, um, and we'll have uh, Glenn with the first question. Coach, so uh, obviously you guys welcome in a, a loaded roster from really top to bottom. Um, Hold on, yeah. Glenn, you're going to have to ask again. Okay. You can go now. Oh, Okay. Um, you know, so you guys, you know, welcome in a loaded roster, really top to bottom. Um, Sorry, Glenn, there was an echo. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you all right. I think we've got to figure that now. Okay. Um, yeah, so just, I guess, kind of talk about, you know, obviously these two pitchers that you guys are going to be facing this weekend in uh, Lighter and Rocker. I mean, uh, are these probably the, the two best arms you guys will face all season, do you think? Well, uh, I think we face Rocker first, uh, and then Leiter second, and then Schultz. They announced the rotation today. Um, well, I, you know, I had we saw Rocker two years ago in the SEC tournament when he was a freshman. Uh, we have not seen Leiter in person yet. Uh, I haven't even seen him pitch live. I've just watched video of him. Um, you know, certainly Rocker was outstanding when we faced him. I think we had five hits and in five innings against them. I think we might have scored five a run or two, uh, but they had like such a great two. lineup that year. They won the national championship great. and, you know, they got to us pretty early. I think they, they took can man to the game early yeah. and, and he, I think he only struck out two batters in five innings five against eight. us, but, you know, you could tell the talent was there. Um, and now he's got a couple of years of experience under his belt. So, you know, all the talk going into the season was that he was going to be the number one pick in the draft, and he may very well be. If he's not, it's probably going to be because his teammate is going to be the number one pick. So, you know, I'm sure that, you know, if there's better pitchers out there, then they're pretty outstanding because these two kids are, are really good. Um, you know, I, I think the biggest shock is that they both came to college. You know, I think everybody really anticipated that that both of them would have signed out of high school. Generally, kids of this talent level do. But, um, you know, they were able to convince these kids to come to school, which, you know, obviously was a tremendous get for, for uh, Tim and their program. Um, and, uh, you know, they're two horses. I mean, when you have outstanding pitchers like that, it can make you a great coach, that's for sure. Um, but, you know, it's a great challenge for our guys, and I think it's a, it's a challenge that our kids are lo really looking forward to. And, uh, you know, we're going to, you know, we're not going to cower. You know, we're going we're gonna to rise up and, and, and enjoy the opportunity. And, and um, you know, like I tell our players, you know, your aspirations are to play in the major leagues. Well, these are the caliber of pitchers you're going to face in the major leagues. So if, if you really do vision yourself as a major league ball player, you know, those, those are the kind of pitchers that you have to be able to hit. hit. You know, you, you either rise up and meet the challenge or, you know, you better taper down what your expectations for your own career are. So it'll be, a, it'll be exciting for our players to, 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 to meet this challenge. Paul, you, you, before you got on, I think you were asking Bill if you've announced the rotation. Are y'all making a change, or is that was that just sort of general? Oh no, no, no. We're we're. Uh, I I just didn't know if we had announced it or not. You know, if I always officially announce it, but uh, it'll be Marceau Hill and then Lavis for us. Uh, my other real question was about, about Gavin. Um, he seems to play with just such a sort of boundless amount of joy. Like he is appreciative of that he's here, and he you know you can see it with him you know, diving across home plate and diving in left field. Has he, have y'all always noticed that from him that he just sort of seems to try to be, give everything that he possibly has every single time that he's out there? I'll tell you, Gavin, Gavin's development has really been one of the true joys I've had this year and in coaching. Um, from the time he arrived on our campus two, three years ago, whatever it was, however you want to define it, when he was a freshman, he's always been such an enthusiastic, person and just a wonderful young man and uh you know he he what I used to think was a little bit nervousness you know his 
his enthusiasm and and uh, high energy. He he didn't really have a uh, a sense of control over it. He, but it was it was such youthful energy and you know passion. But it was a little bit out of control. And now he's learned how to kind of manage it and still stay very enthusiastic. Uh, he, he's just an awesome kid. And uh, I, I worried that maybe, you know, he, he would never be able to, to control his emotions, but he's been able to do that with maturity and, and just the evolution of the man. And he's having a tremendous year. I, I shudder at the thought of where we'd be without him, really. He's, he's been a tremendously clutch hitter. I told you many times that he's made himself into a really good left fielder. He's made numerous tremendous plays out there. Last night was one of them. That that play was really an amazing catch with the wind blowing out, and I didn't think he was going to get to it. He made a just a phenomenal catch out there. Very underrated left fielder. But I have so much confidence in him out there. He's a very good base runner. That slide at the plate, you know, it was, it was a great decision by Nolan Kane as the third base coach with two outs to send him. And uh, at, he, he would have been out if not for a tremendous slide by Gavin to, to go around the catcher with a head first slide and then, you know, be able to swipe the, the plate with his left hand there. I hate those head first slides in the home plate. That's how he, uh, well, actually, it was at second base when he hurt himself in his freshman year. He tore the ligament in his thumb. But I always worry about it at home plate because of the catcher's gear. But he was safe last night and was uninjured, so we'll, we'll let it pass. But uh, he probably would have been out in it if he had slid feet, feet first. You know, he, he's really a complete player, Gavin. He's, uh, he's hit so many clutch home runs for us. He had a clutch uh, single last night. Uh, he's just he's just a, a joy to be around. He's he's about as great a kid as you ever want to meet. You know, just a yes sir, no sir, uh, almost too good to be true. You know, he's like kind of I hate to say this, but he's he's the kind of kid that you'd like your daughter to 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 end up meeting. You know, to bring home someday. You know, he's just a wonderful young man. Jack, I know you're out there somewhere. I don't see you. Okay. Anyone else? Oh, sorry. My oh, trying to here. Yeah, sorry. You know, we're all working on Zoom. Hey, Coach. Um, I know you were talking about working with Kay Beloso on his mechanical tweaks. You're also referring to the Tennessee series. He just got underneath when he thought he was going to be able to put it over the fence. And last night, he's able to get a nice double. Uh, just talk about that. Bring some joy. I, he's really – I can see it. he's looking more comfortable uh, in the box. Um, I just want to elaborate on his development. Well, I'll tell you, it would be such a shot in the arm to get him going, Jack. Uh, I know he can hit. He's hit his whole life. His freshman year, he was tremendous. Last year, he didn't hit for a lot of power in the 17-game season that we played, but he hit for a, high, a pretty good average. He hasn't struck out hardly at all this year. Um, but last night, you know, he smoked that ball down the right field line, and, and it was a clutch hit for us and drove in a run. Um, I saw signs of it this weekend against Tennessee. Uh, boy, I, I, I said it before, it's just going to be – really hard for us to win a championship of any kind without Cade Beloso being a main hitter for us. That's what, that's what he's in the lineup to do is to produce for us. And, you know, these, these numbers that he's showing right now are very uncharacteristic for him. I don't think he's ever been like this in his entire baseball career. So it's, it's new territory for him. And, yeah, I just can't imagine that he's going to stay this way. You know, I, I just feel like he's got a hot streak in him, and this would be a very good time, you know, this week for him to bust out and, and get really hot for us. It would be a huge, huge, huge spark for us and a, a big shot in the arm, so let's hope it happens. Hey, Coach, and then obviously, you know, in, in terms of just 
uh, on the field, you know, second base and center field. It seems like we're asking you about that, you know, every week now. I mean, um, obviously, Will Safford is, has, has looked good out there on defense, um, struggling a little bit at the plate. I mean, just where, where do you see, I guess, the, the development in those two positions? And just, um, I mean, just how much are you kind of going back and forth still about kind of what to do there? Yeah, I mean, there's no question, uh, Glenn, that those two areas have been areas of concern for us all year. Um, and, you know, each of the players that have played there have brought some some strengths to us and also some limitations to us. So, uh, you know, I, I do think with the wind blowing in this weekend, which is what the forecast is for, I, I have this sense that the games are going to be rather low scoring, you know, the caliber of the pitching, you know, and the wind blowing in the cold air. Um, so I, I'm at second base, I'm probably going to lean towards the defense, you know, at, at second base. And that would probably uh, lean towards Collier Cranford being our second baseman. I think his range, his steadiness, his speed, if we can get on base, uh, all those things would probably be the, the, the way that we would go. And in center field, I, I think that uh, even though, you know, Will struck out a couple times last night, I just really like Will's hustle and his speed in the outfield. He did get a nice base hit yesterday. I do think that he, that at times he shows that he can turn around a good fastball. Um, you know, I, you know, I was disappointed in that one at bat with the bases loaded last night. I mentioned that last night. And, and Will knows that I was disappointed. You know, those are opportunities that, you know, you take advantage of them and, and boy, you really gain the confidence from the coach. You know, those are, those are, those are opportunities that you need to seize and, and, and all of a sudden your, your status, you know, takes on some very solid ground, but at the same time, you know, nobody's perfect. And I, and I do think Will has, has shown some, some really good stuff. His, you're never going to question Will's hustle. You're never going to question his toughness. You're never going to question his desire and his passion and and um, and his competitiveness. And I think he's got a chance to make some really good catches in the outfield. I think he's got a chance. Uh, you know, he can bunt a little bit. He can. He's got speed if he can get on base. And I and I do think he's going to hit. He hit a. Excuse me. He hit a ball in Tennessee. If the wind was not blowing in, that would have definitely been a two-run home run. Uh, it, it was very frustrating because he absolutely crushed the ball. I mean, mauled it, and the wind just knocked it down at the warning track. Uh, the other day on Monday, he he had several at bats in a simulated game. He had two balls off the right center field wall that missed going out of the park by about a foot each. So he's got some pop in that bat. And, uh, you know, he sometimes has a little trouble making contact for a little guy that's, you know, that, that's a little concerning. But we have a lot of guys that at times have a little trouble making contact. So it doesn't make him any different than a lot of guys on our team. You know, we, we have a propensity to strike out a little bit too much. But um, I, I'm going to stick with Will this weekend and see, see how he performs. And I, th I think he's going to go out there and let it rip and, and do some good stuff for us. Awesome. Following up, yeah, following up on Will, I mean, did because I remember you saying that right when Gio got hurt, y'all were going to go with him, and then he ran into Gavin. Did it take him a little bit for that hip to kind of loosen up again, or was it also just Gio and – or not Gio, but some of the other guys, you know, giving them an opportunity to center before him? Yeah, I, I think as I recall what happened when he, when he hit that, he ran into uh, Gavin in the pregame, uh, we ended up putting Sanford out there, and Sanford got a couple of hits that day, and – isn't that what happened, as I recall? And then uh, I think he ended up playing two or three games in a row. And then Dross got in there, and then he hit well. So it just kind of delayed his opportunity at that particular time. Um, but I've always liked Will, and uh, I just think this is the right time to give him a chance and see what he can do. All right, Tommy, you're up. Tommy. 
Kami Kreisson on? Tommy. You're not muted anymore, Tommy. Hello, Tommy. Hey, Tommy, I don't, I don't have you as muted. You can unmute yourself. Y'all will have to excuse Tommy, who's a left handed pitcher. <laughs> Okay. Um, we'll come back to Tommy. Uh, does anyone else have a question? Tommy, you can call me on the phone if you need something. Just type it in the chat, Tommy. Read it. Tommy's from, Tommy's as old as I am, so he's not as tech, he's not technologically literate like I am either. Oh, there we go. Comments on Nolan Gosman starting on opening day. Yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Um, I was pretty thrilled when the 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 rankings of uh, I think it was MLB came out with the rankings of each position and we had three former players in the top five of each of their positions. I think LeMay was the number one rated second baseman. Bregman was the number five rated um, third baseman. And then Nola, I don't, what was he rated, Bill? Do you remember as a starting pitcher? Was it five also? And then I think a couple of days later, uh, they announced the uh, opening day starters in both uh, Aaron Nola and Kevin Gosman were going to be opening day starters for their respective teams, the, the uh, Phillies and the Giants. Uh, just so proud of those guys. You know, those are that's those are amazing things, amazing accomplishments. You know, and and um, you know, set sources of pride for for any coach or any program that you know kids go through their time here. They have great experiences, and you know, you like to think that maybe a little part of their development might have happened while they were here to get them to the point that they're at now. Obviously they have the talent and they did it and they're the ones that deserve all the credit. But uh, I think if you ask them, they'll, they'll say that every experience along the way kind of molded them into the players that they are now. And, and, you know, they're, they're very proud of, of their time that they had here at LSU and we'll be watching with great anticipation when they, they make their opening day starts. I know they're very, you know, excited about those opportunities. And, you know, it's only game one of 162 game schedule. So they got a long season ahead of them, but there's something special about opening day in the major league, certainly. And we're awfully proud of both of those guys. Hopefully that answered Tommy's question. Welcome. No. Nope. Thanks, okay. Coach. Okay, guys. <laughs> All right. Y'all, the rest of our schedule at uh, 1 30, we'll have uh, Gavin Dugas, and then at about 1 45, Jaden Hill, and then at 2 p.m., uh, Landon Marceau. So we should have Gavin up.
Y'all can start with questions for Gavin. Gavin, I guess with starters, you know, just uh, the series this weekend, obviously Vanderbilt's got those two arms at the front of the rotation, Leiter and Rocker, that are so heralded. As a, you know, someone who appreciates baseball like yourself, I mean, do you kind of admire what they are as pitchers or um, do you, are you just more focused on how to figure out how to beat them? Uh, obviously, it's uh, not very hard to look over the fact that they're, uh, they're both pretty good pitchers. Um, but at the end of the day, we, we're, we're just ready to face and we're excited to compete. And we, we love facing the best competition in the country. That's why we came to LSU and uh, we're just excited for this weekend. So that's all I can say on it. Yeah, hey, Gavin, you know, I, I guess just kind of talk about, you know, the, the, the play you made out in left field there last night. I mean, it just seems like, you know, whenever you guys need a clutch hit or whenever you guys need a big play, you know, end to ending, um, it, the ball just seems to find you and, and you, you, you just seem to make those plays. I mean, just, just talk about, you know, some of these, you know, clutch moments that you've had earlier this season and just where did you kind of, I guess, develop that, uh, you know, potential to, to come in through those clutch moments? Um, I mean, all I can really say is that I, I'm ready to go each and every pitch. Um, anything I can and will do to, to help this team win, I'll, I'll do to the best of my ability. Um, I don't know if uh, you remember the beginning of the season, but there's a lot of plays that I didn't make in the outfield that I know I should have. Um, so those are just uh, a couple small, small things that I kind of weigh on myself um, just to continue to get better each and every day. Um, so I just try to embrace every moment that I take uh, or that I get and uh, just try to run with it. Kind of following up on that idea, you know, embracing every moment. You seem so every time that you play, like appreciative of the fact that you're getting the chance to play like college baseball at LSU. Where does that come from for you? That sort of just joy of playing the game. Uh, it comes from a lot of years of injuries, uh, a lot of adversity. Uh, two years here of just fighting my fighting my tail off to get in lineup every day to become an everyday guy. Just uh, trying to get coach to hitch his wagon to me so we can. So we could just run the season, uh, run the season together and just play as a team. Um, and I, I personally, I love this team. I love this, this atmosphere, this, this university. Um, it's always been a dream of mine to play here. Um, and right now I'm just focused on success for this team uh, and winning. So that's pretty much my, my whole focus since I've been here. And I'm just, uh, I just thank God for the opportunity I get to play every day, so. Uh, yeah, you know, obviously these last, you know, I guess couple of games, handful of games, we've gotten to see Will Safford out in center field. Um, you know, it's just a different look. I mean, he's, you know, really quick out there. He seems to, you know, always, you know, maybe not always make the play, but he seems to always be around the play. I mean, just, you know, talk about him and just maybe his development that you've seen, um, obviously, you know, taking this advantage or this opportunity and running with. I, uh, I hope coach keeps him. I really like him as a player on our team. Uh, I think, I think he's a, a guy that can provide, provide a, a really big spark. Uh, he's fast. Uh, he, he's sneaky, has sneaky pop. He can, he can move in the outfield. You know, he, he's not scared. Um, I know he's learning a little bit, but we all go through it. I'm still learning myself. Um, this is my first full season as a, a everyday guy. So I, I go through the, the nicks and crannies of learning as well, but I love him in the outfield. Uh, I love him at the plate. I think he's he's going to be a really good player for us, and I hope uh, I hope he can help us win throughout the rest of this year. Just just a quick follow up on him. Uh, that game three uh, against Tennessee, there was that kind of crazy you know uh, pop fly out in center field that you know they had to go to review for in that first inning. Uh, they they said it wasn't a catch. Did you, did you guys talk about that afterwards, or did they think he caught that ball? I mean, just just what was that like? He he did catch it. Um, it happens to be that the, the break didn't fall our way with the review, but yeah, he, he definitely did catch it. Uh, Dylan uh, was there and he uh, had a pretty good view of it. Um, I'm, I'm sure it was a lot better than the camera did, but he, he, he did make a pretty, pretty good play that, that wasn't uh, rewarded for it. Gavin, going back to sort of the, you know, emotion stuff for you. I remember you saying like at the beginning of the season, you used to get so hyped up that you almost sort of playing outside of yourself, wanting to just do well so bad. Paul said that you've learned to control that. How did you learn to control that? Um, a lot of, I would say, adversity um, in the aspect of struggling so much because I was trying so hard to do too much. And I think I was able to understand that I am a good player. Um, I'm here for a reason. 
Um, they recruited me for a reason and I'm hidden uh, in this lineup for a reason. So that kind of just calmed my nerves down. Uh, having having these, te these teammates behind me, these players behind me, giving me this confidence as well, uh, knowing these guys believe in me in every at-bat and every situation that I come into, uh, that just gives me the, the belief and the confidence that I need um, just to run with and uh, just to be a leader for this team. And I, I love to embrace it. And it just gives me full and utter complete focus. And I just love it. And I love this team. And I just love the energy that we're having right now. Was there a moment that clicked for you, that realization? Uh, I would say the uh, my first hit of the year, um, the I think it was the Grand Slam um, that night, or I'm sorry, the night before that, uh, coach coach really got into me, um, and I'm I'm pretty thankful for it actually. Uh, it kind of helped me to realize that that I am who I am, and I've said this plenty of times, and I'm going to keep saying it each and every day to myself. I just need to let me be me. Um, and after that moment, I think um, I was able to kind of calm myself down a little bit and stop thinking so much of trying to do too much and just just playing the game. When you say coach got into you, what did he say? Uh, he said he said some things that uh, I'm going to keep between us um, just because I, I, I like to have that fuel and that fire. Um, I. I it was, it was very motivational um, in, in a good way. Nothing, nothing negative, all positive things where um, it was just him trying to, trying to get me going, trying to get me ready for the season and trying to get me to become the leader that he wanted me to be. So that's, uh, that's pretty much all I'll kind of touch on there. But it was, it was good. It was nothing, nothing negative at all. Any more questions for Gavin? I could ask more if we, anyone else has any. Um, we good? Okay. Um, to, there seemed to be a moment like in the, I don't remember, it was one of your walk-offs, which I feel like there's been a couple maybe this year. I, we all were going through the outfield and um, you seemed almost like overcome with emotion. We couldn't quite tell from up here, but like, you just seem so happy. I mean, what was kind of going through your mind? I think it maybe was maybe like the singled against, I don't remember who. Um, I mean, was it, you know, what emotion were you feeling in that? Like when y'all ended uh, up all the way in center field and you're just hugging everybody. Well, um, before that at bat, I was, uh, I was walking in uh, to the on deck circle and I remember looking at Eddie Smith, uh, our hitting coach, and I, I smiled at him. Uh, he didn't say anything to me. I didn't say anything to him. Uh, and I just knew that, uh, if I had the opportunity to to give us the win or uh, just come up in that spot, I was going to succeed. Um, and when I did, personally, it was, uh, it was very satisfying. Um, it made me uh, – like, it, it, it gave me a lot of uh, emotion, I guess you could say, in a good way. Um, but seeing all those guys run out in the field after that was uh, was pretty cool. Um, I never really got mobbed like that before uh, by my teammates. So that was, that was kind of a, like a surreal moment that I was just trying to take in and – I got to hug almost every guy on the team after that. So it was a, it was a pretty cool moment for me and I'll probably never forget it. Were there any tears mixed in? It looked like you were almost a little bit red afterward. Oh, uh, no, no. That was probably just a lot of, uh, a lot of fist pumps and maybe somebody probably caught me in the cheek or something. Um, I don't think I have anything else for you today. I appreciate it, Gavin. Appreciate y'all. Thanks guys. Um, Jaden's not supposed to come till 145, but he might come a little early. Just let y'all know. Y'all can start with questions. Landon, how are you doing today? Good. How's it going? Good. As a you know, as some as a pitcher yourself, someone who I'm sure appreciates pitching, is there are you looking forward to maybe like going up against guys like Leiter and Rocker, even though y'all face such good pitchers every weekend in the conference, guys who are projected maybe going to the top of the draft? Is there sort of an appreciation for, you know, what they're able to do? Oh, uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. You know, they're two tremendous pitchers, but, uh, you know, I'm not pitching against them. I'm pitching against their lineup, you know. So, uh, but, yeah, it's going to be very fun um, to be able to watch them do their craft and, you know, 
Um, me and Kumar, you know, played together with Team USA in 2017, and um, I have tremendous respect for Kumar and, and, and his craft. You know, he's very good at what he does. Um, he's a fierce competitor, one of, one of the biggest competitors I've ever met. Um, so it's going to be really fun, really fun. When you talk about their, their craft, I mean, what is it that makes them effective pitchers uh, you know, from that sort of technical standpoint? Yeah, well, I mean, Kumar and uh, Jack are, uh, you know, they're power pitchers. Um, you know, they they do it two different ways, even though they're both power pitchers. You know, Kumar's 6'4", 230, 240, somewhere around there. And Jack is a little bit on the smaller side, but gets every ounce of energy out of his body that he can generate and puts it into the in, into his fastball, you know. And he has that really explosive fastball that, that really carries through the zone well. And that's why he gets so many strikeouts on it. You know, it's almost like you have to try and hit the top of the ball and hit it on top of the plate to get on top of it, you know. So uh, just, just that type of stuff. It really makes them unique. Um, you know, Kumar is, since I've played, uh, played with him at USA, he's come a long, long way, um, you know, and, and, and what he does, you know, he's, he's, you could tell just the poise he's got, you know, the c commanding the fastball, not just trying to blow it by guys. Um, he's come a long way and I'm, I'm, I'm proud of Kumar and um, I'm looking forward to, to facing off against him, you know. Hey, Landon, uh, you know, we were just talking with, with Paul a little bit, and he said that, you know, they're, you guys are ex expecting it to be kind of low-scoring games because of the weather uh, this weekend. And, you know, I know for a pitcher, you, your approach doesn't change much, but when you're, you know, playing in, you know, colder weather and, and, and you know, expecting to get more contact hits instead of power, um, what's the mindset, I guess, heading into a start like that where you know you're going to probably have to grind out uh, some pretty tough at-bats and some pretty tough outs? Yeah, well, I mean, you pretty much said it. You know, the 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 objective doesn't change. The the mentality doesn't change. You know, we're still trying to get out quickly. Um, you know, four or less per hitter is, is one of the goals that that um, we talk about here as a pitching staff. And um, you know, and that's that's all we're going to try and do and um, minimize damage, um, damage control, stop the bleeding, all that types of stuff. You know, to keep keep uh, free runners off base. Um, limit walks, all this other type of stuff. So it, it doesn't really change for me as a pitcher. And, and um, you know, the weather doesn't really play a huge factor with, unless it's, you know, dramatic winds or, you know, like freezing temperatures. Other than that, you know, it's, it's still, um, you know, the objective is the same. You mentioned the walks. Um, you know, this obviously this last weekend was not, you know, the best, I guess, in terms of you guys walking and giving free passes. But, you know, what does it say? I guess, you know, you guys threw a lot of freshman pitchers last night. Um, you know, I think six or seven guys that you're probably really going to be relying on out of the bullpen uh, this weekend. What, what does it say? You know, that I think they only had maybe one or two walks combined uh, against South Alabama. Just, I mean, just does that just point to guys coming into their own a little bit more? I mean, just, just what, what do you attribute maybe the, the such the downtick in, in walks and free passes from, from this weekend to Tuesday? Yeah, well, I mean, Monday, Monday when we came back and we, we all kind of talked about it as a staff, and um, that's really the one thing that really jumped out, of, uh, out at us is um, the number of walks from the weekend. And uh, we know that, you know, free passes, you know, there's, there's much more, um, much less room for error um, with free passes. So, you know, we can't give things away that are free, um, you know, errors, walks, things like that. Um, really have to really have to limit those. And, um, you know, and yeah, our pitchers last night did a great job. That's a really good South Alabama team, man. They, they really, um, they, they had to walk off or Alabama had to walk them off, I believe um, a couple of weeks ago. So that just shows you, man, they're, they're, they're up for the challenge. And I thought we did a great job last night. On that same subject, I remember back in your freshman year, walks were an issue at the start of the season. Y'all had to have some kind of team meeting after Texas, I think, or something. And you kind of figured it out. It ended up being as much of a problem. What did y'all do then to – like, how do you kind of figure out that as a staff? How, does you, how do you address a problem like walks? Well, we, um, you know, we come together as a staff and we, we address the problem as, you know, hey, we, we, we can't give these things away. You know, there's numbers on, you know, leadoff walks are almost a guarantee. You could almost put it in the book. You know, leadoff walks, they score, you know, and it's those types of things that we have to continue to bring to our attention um, and really, really limit those free passes and because and, they, they always seem to come around and score for whatever reason. Um, but, I mean, that's, that's just how the game is, you know, so. 
Hey, Landon, I'm doing a story on you. And, and I talked to your dad the other day about your love of baseball and your childhood sitting in front of the TV, watching, you know, MLB Network, taking mental notes from the commentators. What do you remember about your, your love of the game uh, at an early age? And are you still, you know, as big of a student of the game now as you were then? Oh, I'm definitely just as big a student of the game. Um, you know, that's something that, you know, you just can't lose because every day the game throws something new at you that you've never seen before, never heard before, you know, I mean, and then with all the analytics and stuff, everybody, including people in the big leagues are learning about all of these different things of, you know, induced vertical break and vertical approach angle and launch angle and, you know, all this other type of stuff. So there's all types of, of, of room to improve mentally and learn so much about the game and how it works and how your pitches work against certain guys with certain swings and how what their approach against you and what type of, type of stuff you have. So, um, yeah, and I mean, I mean, I remember God, Pedro Martinez was my favorite pitcher to watch when I was young. I've done so much research on Pedro Martinez and just how explosive he was and how powerful he was and just a 5'10", 175 pound body, you know, so that was very, very interesting to me. And, you know, me and him had have similar bodies. Um, I'm not quite as explosive as him, didn't throw quite as hard, but um, a lot of a lot of my pitch grips mimic his. So and that's where, you know, just the studying of the game and, you know, other other guys like that, just it, it was really fascinating to me as, as a young kid. Wasn't Greg Maddox somebody that you looked up on, on YouTube and kind of looked at interviews and stuff like that? No doubt. No doubt. Yeah, he was he was more of um you know, the, the mental side of, and, you know, Pedro Martinez was more of how he threw things, what he did to certain hitters. But Greg Maddox was more of the mindset of, hey, command over velocity and, you know, you have to change speeds and keep hitters off balance. So that that's more of what that was. But, again, two very, very drastically different pitchers that, you know, are now both Hall of Famers. So, and they did it two completely different ways. And, you know, that just shows you that you don't have to throw 100 to get outs. You know, 90 is playing good enough with good stuff. Um, not saying that 97 doesn't help, but if you can command 97, 98, 100, like, of course, I mean, look at Dick of the Grom. He's, he's spotting 101, and he hadn't gotten hit yet. So, um, you know, it all plays a factor, but there's, there's no one way to get a guy out. Thank you. Any random kind of question here. Whatever happened to the journal that you used to keep? Yeah, well, the journal, we used to uh, write, you know, things down in there that, you know, maybe the opposing team or, you know, what I was feeling like, things I could improve on, this and that. But, you know, it really kind of – it got me thinking too much, I think, instead of the task at hand, you know. And, and it really – looking at it in a bit of bigger picture, it, um, you know, brought me back instead of looking forward. So uh, that's really the only reason I got rid of that. I mean, I still, you know, keep mental notes. Um, you know, I have to, you go through the lineup three, four, five times as a starting pitcher. Um, you really have to know what you've done to the hitters the previous times to, to be able to attack them a different way. Cause if you keep the same pitch patterns, they're going to, they're going to get you. So, um, just the mental notes and, but that's really why I got rid of that. I just, I didn't want to look backwards anymore. I wanted to look forward. Did you, do you still have it tucked away somewhere or did you throw it out? Completely? Threw it out, threw it out. Didn't want nothing to do with it no more. So. But like I said, I keep the mental notes and, um, you know, so, I mean, I still have a little bit of information stored away in the back of my head. So, but I didn't want to uh, rely on looking in the past. You know, I mean, there's there's things that happened in my past that I really, you know, kind of, um, you know, look back on to help me for the future. But it's not just strictly looking backwards. It, it'll, it's something to help me going forward as well. I'm curious also to ask you about a, a teammate, Gavin Duga, who he seems to play with just such enjoyment that he's even here. Um, what is y'all always say, or at least it seems to be, whenever he does something well, you're like, no one deserves this more than Gavin. Why is it that y'all say that about him? Well, Gavin, um, I've never seen him, you know, angry or, you know, just aggravated or anything like that, you know, um, he just loves being out here. He's one of the hardest workers I've ever seen. And I've been around a lot of really quality players and he's one of the hardest working ones out there. And, you know, he's just one that, you know, you can't dislike. There's no disliking Gavin Dugas. You know, he's just, he's such a great person and a good, great player. And, you know, this, the struggles that him and I shared our freshman year and, um, you know, really coming together um, at some points to, to get each other back on track because knowing we were much better than we were, our freshman year, you know, and I think we've both proven that 
you know, no matter what type of struggles you go through as a player, as a person, you can always overcome those with the right mindset. And um, having him, you know, on my shoulder and my sh me on his shoulder, you know, and it's really helped us move through a lot of, lot of adversity together. Had you ever played him in high school, both being in Louisiana? No, I've never played against Gavin. The first time I met Gavin was uh, at East Coast Pro. That's the first time I met Jaden, too. So, you know, we kind of kind of met early before, you know, the, the college days. But, you know, so didn't get to face him in high school. And last one on him. Coach Maneri said that he's really learned how to control that emotion that makes him such a fun player to watch. How much have you seen him, I guess, mature over the last three years? Because when he came in as a freshman, he said he was just playing outside of himself when he do well so badly. How have you seen him learn to harness that? Yeah, well, me and him kind of had the same issues. We're trying to be, you know, we're trying to do too much. You know, we're getting outside of what we do. And that's one of the things we focused on together was staying within ourselves and, and, and doing what, um, what we know we can, you know. And um, like, like I said before, I don't, you know, I don't throw 100, so I'm not going to try and throw 100, you know. So, and it's the same for him, man. You know, he's, he's a power guy. He's a, he hits the ball with power. He, the ball comes off of his bat. You know, similar to Dylan Cruz, everything he hits is just hard, man, you know, so um, and that's who he is. And he, he's embraced that role. He's worked extremely hard on his defense, you know, making a transition from second to left field. Um, he's worked tremendously hard on that. And he's just man, he's his attitude. It, it, it's just so much positivity. There's no negativity in Gavin Dugas. Wait, so did you all talk about that kind of thing together, what you were just saying? Yeah, yeah. Any particular conversation stand out that was impactful, you think? Um, I mean, after the Texas series, we've talked a little bit. Um, that was kind of the most meaningful thing. And it's just exactly what I just told you. We have to continue to be who we are and, and all of this other stuff. But that's really all it was. It was no, you know, this big hoorah of anything certain. But it was just, you know, continuing to have each other's back and um, knowing that me and him would be there for each other. Thank you. Larry. Any more questions? Thank y'all. All right, y'all can start with questions for Jaden. And this off here, Jaden. Just I guess real quick before we look to Vanderbilt, looking back on your last start, is there anything that you're trying to you know work on or improve? It seemed like walks kind of became an issue, but uh, what are you sort of working on this week? Uh, mainly, the focus for me has just been consistency. Uh, consistency. I threw a new a new pitch this past weekend, uh, a new slider, and so just gaining consistency in all three pitches and being able to throw all three pitches in any count I want to. So did you continue to mess with that slider grip that you've been doing over the last few weeks? Yes. So the one I threw Thursday, or I'm sorry, this past weekend was something that I learned maybe two or three days before. Uh, with uh, I talked to Amir Garrett and Marcus Stroman. We talked on FaceTime, Zoom, or whatever for over an hour, and we just went over different pitch grips. And so I tried it in a pen. I liked it. And so that was the pitch that I used this weekend, this past weekend. Yeah, and then I guess, you know, kind of moving forward to, to this weekend, obviously, you know, the, the big, you know, thing is going to be you versus Jack Leiter and, and Kumar Rocker and then Landon Marceau. I mean, just a bunch of A-list pitchers here. I mean, just, uh, you know, I know that you're obviously an ultra competitor and, you know, want to, you know, want to do your best. But just, you know, from a pitching perspective, how excited are you just to, you know, kind of go head to head with a couple of, you know, the, the best and brightest in the SEC and in the country? Uh, definitely excited you know, just to uh, see those guys. I definitely learn a lot from them, knowing that they the experience that they have and the success they've had. And um, you know, I definitely reach out to Kumar me and reach out. You know, I want to learn things from him and I enjoy watching them. But you know, at the end of the day, you know, they're they're another team. And once we get in between those lines, there are no friends. You know, we're here to compete, and so it's gonna be fun. You know, but uh, I think everyone will take their game to another level, and we'll enjoy the weekend. You mentioned Kumar. I mean, have you guys talked a whole lot in the past? I mean, just, just what's y'all's relationship like? I know, obviously, you guys are two very highly talented guys, uh, you know, in this upcoming draft class. I mean, just what's your relationship like with him, if at all? 
Uh, we ran into each other a couple of times and we have a lot of mutual friends. So, you know, we, we talk a little through social media, but it, it's nothing. It's not an everyday thing, but he's a, a good human being, a great baseball player and definitely uh, someone that I, I love watching. Yeah, we, we were actually also just just talking with Paul, um, you know, a couple of minutes ago. And he, you know, he says he's expecting some lower scoring games for you guys. And, and we were talking with Landon, and, you know, it's, it's not really a change in approach, but there's definitely, um, you know, I guess more of a sense of urgency in terms of, you know, getting outs and not committing walks and errors and stuff of that nature, giving free passes and those kind of tougher conditions. I mean, just, you know, for, for you personally, what, what, what are some of the challenges that, that pitching in colder weather or pitching with higher winds, you know, kind of present and how do you uh, go about not make, making sure you don't commit some of those errors? Right. You know, honestly, I can't, I can't base my game off of that. But I know there are some things that I need to clean up as far as the walks, as far as getting behind in counts. Um, the statistics show that I, I'm fairly successful when I'm ahead in counts. And what happens when I'm behind in counts, my fastball percentage getting hit goes way up when I'm behind in counts. And so, you know, those are things that um, getting leadoff batters out, you know, if a leadoff batter gets on, he scores most of the time. Walks, all our runs that we've given up have been from walks. And so uh, just not giving guys free bases and making them earn everything. On that topic of free base, Landon said y'all talked about it as the staff when you got back like on Monday. What sort of conversation uh, when you did it? Can you say that one more time? You broke up a little bit. Okay. You can hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Landon said on the topic of walks that y'all discussed that as a staff when you got back from Tennessee. Where, what kind of conversations did y'all have? And, uh, where were you when you were talking? Uh, we, we got together as a team. We had a team, uh, a players team meeting, and it was just basically um, not giving anything. We're too talented to be to give any uh, to give people free things. And this game, this league is too tough. The SEC is a tough league, and I'm seeing that firsthand. And so, I, if I can't help myself out, then I'm not giving the team an opportunity to win. And so, there are things that we can't control, and I, I believe giving them free things is one. You know. Um, you're just not helping yourself out at all. And so we, we just kind of talked to, to the team and we talked to the, the hitters, the pitchers, and I think everyone's on the same page. No one's giving in. No one's giving up. I think that I think we're going to be good this weekend. Oh, something you mentioned about Kumar, that you maybe reached out to him at about like – or talked about like pitches. Is there something that you've taken from him and applied to your game at any point? Uh, not necessarily as far as that, but like reaching out in general, just showing each other love. But uh, I, I love watching, you know, his stuff sh comes through on my social media feed. And so uh, I just love the way he competes. You know, he's a competitor and um, I, I wish nothing but success for him. And he's definitely someone I love watching play. Jay, I was also curious to ask you about Gavin Duga. Um, he seems to play with such passion and pride and just like happy that he's even here um yeah. how much do y'all as teammates sort of notice that that he just plays with that kind of energy yeah he's he's always been that dirtbag player since he stepped on campus he is fighting him uh that dude is amazing he's i love the gavin dugas almost more than anybody else on his team honestly like gavin is a special human being and he deserves everything he's getting he puts in so much work behind closed doors uh, there's a lot of stuff that he does. He goes and hits late. Just a lot of different things that a lot of people don't see that Gavin does. And the stuff that you do see, he's giving 100%, 100% effort with everything he does, whether it's BP, uh, practice, fielding ground balls, just running bases, whatever it is, you're going to get everything out of Gavin. And who who doesn't want someone like that on their team? Did you see him able to sort of finally maybe, not relax, but – harness that, all that energy once he hit that grand slam against Louisiana Tech uh, opening weekend and sort of because he said that he used to be so almost like he, he couldn't control it how excited he was right did you see his sort of attitude or mentality at all change after that hit that he was able to kind of come within himself a little bit yeah now that you say that definitely his confidence is on a high and with with the talent that he has the the amount of competitiveness the comp how competitive he is if he has confidence, that dude is going to be something special, and he's going to be a tough out to get in this league.
Any more questions? Thank you all.